this is DC Channel Guns. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. What up? This is DC Channel Guns coming at you with another gun video. Appreciate you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Now, I want to appreciate all my subscribers that come here. I want to appreciate the fight that y'all having. I want to appreciate the energy, all the good information. I appreciate your time. And, you know, I'm the type of person that, you know, I got subscribers that, that take the time to leave a message. I appreciate that. And, you know, I take the time to, you know, to read every last one of them and let you know that, hey, I read your message and understand what you're saying. I appreciate that. And so, you know, we must keep, you know, um, the unity. Um, we must keep, you know, standing together and fight. That's the only way we're going to win. Now, like I said before, y'all the star and I'm the messenger. Now, one mistake that gun owners keep making, even though they don't think they're making this mistake, they are. I'm talking about, you know, it's a lot of things. I've seen a lot of stuff where, you know, the number one, number two, number three gun owner mistakes. But I'm telling you, this is the biggest one that I see. And in the fight that we're in, we have to stop this right now. That is moving out of the state that has increased gun laws. Now, pretty much... When you look at this country, a lot of these states have some type of gun law. But the problem is we have to have gun owners that is going to get out and fight. I'm talking about get out and support the Second Amendment. That means voting. Get out, going to your town hall, you know, showing your presence. Look at the people in Virginia. You know, they're flooding these towns and town halls and meetings. They have so many people there, they can't even fit in the building. Because guess what? The politician didn't expect that type of, you know, uplash from gun owners. And we're out, we're fighting. So we have to do that in every single state, city, and town. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how small it is. We have to show our presence. Now, I'm going to take two states, and everybody already know, um, New York and California. You have Californians moving to other states that's near, that's, that's, that's near California. You have people in New York who move into states that's near New York or, you know, they're coming down south. They're coming to a lot of these gun-friendly states. Look at Virginia. Virginia's not an accident, people. How Virginia got where it's at? I, like I just told you, you have people moving to other places and they're, they're spreading that, they're taking that mindset from one place to another and it just spread. We have to stop that. We have to fight where we at. We have to fight where we reside because when you flee the state, the politicians, all they see is, oh, okay, you know, this is what the voters want in the state. Look at Virginia. I'm talking about, you have all the sanctuary cities popping up, and you still have the, the elected official talking about, well, this is what Virginia's wanted. You know, this is what the Virginia voters wanted. So, I, you know, I wonder how could that be? Is that probably because you have people who could be fleeing Virginia, or, you know, people from coming up north going to Virginia? I'm talking about, it's, it's a lot of reasons, but that is one of the number one states. I'm talking about, I looked at a lot of articles where some of the gun-friendly states has increased from residents from all the anti-gun states. California, you got people moving to um, Nevada and all these places. They, they, I'm talking about, they're pretty much fleeing California, going across the state line, and, you know, they're moving there. You have a lot of them that are going to other states to buy their guns and ammunition and stuff. People, we have to fight where we at. I'm talking about, when I looked at the numbers in California, the amount of gun owners that they have, how in the world, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, I, a lot of people talk about it, but I'm still trying to figure out how is California passed the laws that they have. Now, New York, I can understand New York. You know, New York, there's a lot of buying power and stuff in New York. That, that's pretty much what it is. You know, it, that's, I'm talking about New York got its own um, issues and stuff. But, you know, when you look at New York, New York has a lot of anti-guns. So I can expect that up there. But when you look at California, there's a lot of gun owners in California. You know, a lot of people who love to, you know, to express their Second Amendment rights. And, man, the gun laws had pretty much just just went for the anti-gun 100% their direction. You know, there was a little pushback here and there. But, you know, as far as that, everything's been going the anti-gun way. We have to stop moving, people. We have to stay there and fight. And, you know, like I said, when they increase the laws in these states, a lot of people go across the state line to a no, a, a, another uh, gun-friendly state, and you're putting pressure on that state now. Now, you're putting pressure on no politician, and then the same mindset move over there, and then you can't even go to that state. Now, you, you're going to be driving all across, across the country to get whatever you're trying to get to a gun-friendly state. We must stay where we at to fight, because you just make it worse. When we run away, we makes it worse. Just like in my state, we have a lot of people moving from up north that has that anti-gun mindset moving here. We're trying to keep them from moving here because they're bringing that mindset here. And, you know, they're increasingly voting the same way they was voting at the states that they just left. Now, we have to stop that. You know, I want to bring that to your attention. Um, you know, that's pretty much my biggest 
number one thing, the reason why, you know, a lot of these states are gaining power when it comes to, you know, infringing on the Second Amendment right, is that is that that is the main reason is why it's happening. Now, I had talked about this before, but, you know, I'm seeing articles that keep popping up. That's what's going on. And you have gun owners, you know, who are actually saying, you know, well, I left this state because I don't like the, some of the gun laws and stuff. So when you're moving, that's less people fighting. So the more move, the less people to fight, the more power they gain. And then you make the other states, you, they, see, they put the other states in the mindset that, oh, okay, you know, it's okay to pass these laws. Even though the laws are legal that they're passing, they're infringing against the Second Amendment. But see, the lawmakers, especially in Virginia, I'm talking about, they think that all the laws they're passing are, are constitutional laws. No, they're not. I'm talking about, you're breaking the law. But, but like I said before, because they keep saying, well, the voters voted for it. You know, this is what Virginians wanted. They think it's okay. So that's the politician mindset. That's what they're doing. They're going by looking at the numbers and stuff that they're getting. And, you know, a lot of gun owners, like I said, we have to get into this politic fight. We have to get into it. I'm talking about, you know, I know a lot of us like the raw, 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 raw. Talk the tough talk. We ready to get into it. Nah, that, that is not going to work because they got they, they got a solution for that. It's called take your guns. It's called, you know, throw you in prison. They, they have a solution. We have to have a starting game and an end game. So we have to show our presence. And in Virginia, I think if you, fat, if you back it up maybe two years, three, four years ago, and, you know, before Obama left, if you backed it up back then, they won't be where they at now. And I'm quite sure it's that because... They have a lot of gun owners in Virginia. I'm talking about, let's not be, you know, be fooled about what's going on. But I think a lot of people just sat back. You know, we sat back for a long time and we didn't want to get into the fight or get into, you know, just get into it. And now we're forced to get into the fight. Now you're forcing gun owners to take that extra measure, that extra step. And a lot of us is up to here with it. You know, we're ready to just pretty much go toe to toe with the anti-gun. So that's pretty much how they've been pushing the situation. A lot of us at a boiling point. Um, we just can't take it no more. But at the same time, we must stay in our character. Don't get out of your character and everything. Um, you know, we don't want to be the ones to, you know, the, 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 the throw the, the first blow. We don't want to do that, you know. So we want to be the ones that resist it and resist it. Only when it's necessary, we have to fight. Only when it's necessary, when we see that they really have pretty much stepped out of line. And, you know, that's the only way we get to that. When you look in the history and you look at how it went, um, like I said before, the boundary was crossed uh, way too much. And when you start going door to door and taking people for arms and stuff like that, um, I think that's when it's going to pop off. But until then, until we see that happen, we have to do it peacefully. So just want to talk about that a little bit. This is DC Channel Guns, and I'll catch you on the next one. This is DC Channel Guns. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.